Hi everyone, it's Ardeth, and I'm excited to be here today with a card featuring the new Essentials by Ellen, Mondo Holly. I recently watched a video by Christina Werner, where she used watercolor markers to ink smoosh some watercolor backgrounds. I've done it before, but I found it really neat because she used a full card sized sheet of acetate, and it seemed to just give really cool results. I'll link to her video in the description below. This new Mondo Holly set is a sketchy classic take on a Christmas favorite, and it comes with a few sentiments, and there are available matching dies. I started by taping down a piece of Bristol Smooth card. I used purple tape, but I find it a bit wide. So here's a quick tip. Rip off the amount you need, fold it back on itself so that the non-sticky sides are together, and give it a quick snip up the middle. This gives enough support to your paper, and it means you're using less tape. I wanted a bit of precision in the placement of my color on my panel, so I used the stamp set as a guide. Because I would be flipping the acetate over to smoosh it onto the panel, I flipped the stamp set over so that it would all line up a bit better when I actually stamped the holly. Now, I'm using words like precision and line up. This is really a loose technique, and I really had no idea where it was going to take me. So let's just take all this with a grain of salt, shall we? I started with three colors of green Zig Art & Graphic Twin Tip Markers, and I scribbled where the holly will be. I used my Distress Sprayer to spritz some water and smoosh the acetate onto the Bristol, pressing down with my fingers to spread the color a bit. I lifted the acetate and used some of the leftover ink to add more color variation with my panel. I wanted to keep the center a bit cleaner for the red berries. Next, I added some red, using the stamp as a guide once more. Here's where my precision went right out the window, and I started truly embracing the looseness of this technique. The red went everywhere. So much for precision and lining up, right? To deepen the color, I gave it another try with the red marker. I thought maybe the mini mister would give me a bit more control over the spread, but it really didn't. Because the green was already dry, the red sat on top and didn't create a muddy mess, so that made me happy. And in the end, I think this background is beautiful. I love the soft blending of colors and the variations over the panel. Next, it was time to stamp the holly. I put the background into my MISTI, using the stamp to make sure I had it in the correct position. I used an anti-static pouch to make sure that the embossing powder wouldn't stick in the wrong places, and then I inked up the holly stamp with Versamark ink. I stamped it two times to make sure I got a really good impression and that the embossing powder would stick. I sprinkled sparkly gold embossing powder over top and heated it until it was melted. At this point, I realized that this wasn't going to turn out the way I had envisioned, so I started rethinking. I thought the gold was pretty, but it's soft and it didn't give a lot of definition to the holly. Maybe if I had stamped in black, I could have finished at this point, but it was clear that I couldn't stop now. I got the darker green and the red markers, and I started painting the leaves and berries using a Nouveau water brush. I put the stamp set next to me as a guide because I was really having a hard time even seeing the shapes on the panel. As I moved along, I got happier and happier. The deeper colors lent a lot of definition within the softer background colors. I was getting a loose, artistic look and I was really pleased. I simply laid down dark green along the veins of the leaves and then spread the color with the water brush. The color underneath, the variation in the amounts of water and pigment created so much interest in these leaves and the original background cast a pretty glow around the holly. I wanted a bold sentiment that wouldn't get lost on a busy watercolor panel. So I chose Joy from the Holiday Words set and I embossed it with the same gold embossing powder so that it would match exactly. I used a thin strip of cardstock as a handle while I pressed Versamark onto the die cut, then I poured the powder over and heated it until it was all melted and sparkly. To finish the card, I trimmed the panel down a bit and put it on a black card base. I cut two more Joy die cuts from black cardstock and stacked them up. This helps provide a bit more definition and makes it stand out. I hope you enjoyed this video. Supply lists are below and on my blog. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.